All right, I think we're live. Welcome in, everybody. Good afternoon. We are finally back after over 250-some-odd days uh, from the end of the last, abrupt end of the last basketball season. Duke is finally back. Uh, and waiting about another three days of postponement, I suppose, from the Gardner-Webb game that never actually happened. So, um the chances that we'll see the actual game are slim to none because that is a completely illegal. Um, and sometimes I do show highlights, but that is going to be like the extent of it, I suppose. Um, and if DJ Stewart is actually your brother, that is pretty sick because uh, DJ Stewart is freaking phenomenal. I can't wait to actually see the, uh, the the freshman play here. Especially, we will get to see an early look at Jalen Johnson, who is in the starting lineup tonight, or this afternoon, rather. And um, is actually going to be our starters for today. Only one freshman will be starting. It will be Goldwire, <laughs> Wendell Moore, Joey Baker, Jalen Johnson, and Matthew Hurt. And that will be the extent of the starting lineup. So my guess, however, is that we will see the, the rest of the freshmen as well, including Jeremy Roach, DJ Stewart, um, Mark Williams, and even Henry Coleman will probably get a chance to play today. Uh, the uh, Patrick DePay, the transfer from Columbia, will probably also get a shot here. Uh, we'll see what lineups Coach K decides to actually rotate in and out throughout the day. Uh, but yes, the starting five in an empty Cameron Indoor Stadium with no fans, which seems really bizarre. Actually, having spent over six years in Cameron itself, uh, to see it absolutely quiet is just odd. Uh, but we do finally have basketball back and the tip off Jalen Johnson taking the tip off and winning it here for the Blue Devils to Goldwire and to Wendell Moore to get things started. Matthew Hurt uh, here who has uh, no yes actually this is Matthew Hurt will take the first three pointer for the Blue Devils and he will miss. Matt is up 20 pounds over the summer now basically at 6'8 240 pounds. So he has had some significant growth in the offseason, which is very interesting to see. Apparently, he had some sort of self-reflection a little bit there that uh, the bank shot actually for Coppin State, uh, while we're talking about that, actually goes in. Um, is Sharif Knox starting for uh, Coppin State? i got to give me a sec here, as I need to acquaint myself with the... Uh, with the Coppin State team. Uh, no, he is not. Um, uh, he is not uh, starting for Coppin State here. Uh, the Kobe Thomas actually has the ball for State at the moment, and he is going to dive in there. And the putback is going to be good for Keenan Sarvin. So actually, it's a quick 5-0 lead for Coppin State. I'll check the stats, and we'll uh, get the three the three-pointer, the accurate three-point stats there. But Matthew Hurt's second three-point shot is off, and Jalen Johnson can't come up with the rebound. So State is out in transition here, and there's going to be a foul on Joey Baker, and Coach K is upset right off the rip here. And uh, showing the game is illegal, so we will not be showing the game. Uh, so... If you're here for the chat and to enjoy Duke basketball, that's what we're here to do. Um, sometimes I do show replays, but typically the entire game, uh, we are not looking for DMCA strikes here. So can't actually do that. Uh, the feel free throw by Dequan Clayton is good. And let me get my stats feed here. And it's a, a quick 7-2, to two actually, uh, in favor of Coppin State here. we got to see how the Blue Devil defense looks uh, this early in the season. Uh, one of our uh, fellow 
uh, folks in the Discord channel, actually uh, a Kansas fan was sort of complaining that his Kansas defense against Gonzaga was not very good. Defense going to be the one of the toughest things actually to get right, especially after such a long layoff. And oh my goodness, Jalen Johnson puts Coppin State on the floor. And then the rebound, and Matthew Hurt, no, nope, Wendell Moore, gonna now Duke's just gonna set up a half court offense here. Johnson in the paint, but will pass up the shot to Joey Baker, who passes up that shot again, and Duke just content to throw it around the outside to finally get it to Wendell Moore for an easy two. So Wendell on the board for the Blue Devils. The score, don't know why that score isn't working. We'll fix the game cast. We'll fix the game cast here. 10 to 4, Coppin State at the moment. Refresh. Uh, it's okay. ESPN is failing on so many levels today. It's not even showing the actual score of the game. That's, that's pretty bad, ESPN. Okay. We're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way in that case, which would mean that we're going to type out the whole damn thing. Oh, I actually, I make sense why, because there is no, it is, it is 10, six at the moment. Uh, okay, here we go. There is no score because there is no stats feed actually. Um, as the stats feed doesn't seem to be working, so we're going to go with plan B, which is to do this. Window. Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. All right, there you go. And here is your score. And all right, there actually now they finally fixed it. So it is ten to six. Um, as this is going absolutely crazy on me. All right, we are at a commercial break. It is 10 to 6. I'm trying to fix things. This is like the first uh, first game of the season. Things are not going to quite work the way that we thought they would. And we've got this one. Okay, I need to get this squared away. Nope, I'm gonna do that. All right, so it is Wendell Moore with two. Jalen Johnson's got two of his own. Joey Baker's got uh, Joey Baker's got two, and Matthew Hurt has two. That's the that's the eight points so far for the Blue Devils. And on the other side for State, uh, if I can actually, this thing is annoying. Uh, Kobe Thomas with three, Clayton with two, and Sarvin with five. Okay. All right, so let's try to see what we can do about the game itself. Uh, da -da. All right.
All right, we'll try to be careful about how we actually do this. And if we, for the time being, throw that up there, we can do replays and such, but uh, we'll keep that off for right now. Um, and it's going to be a turnover, actually. So DJ Stewart, no, Jeremy Roach into the game, and his first play as a Blue Devil is a turnover, which is quite unfortunate for the uh, the highly recruited guard. But we have a basically three subs here after the timeout. It's Mark Williams in, DJ Stewart in, and Jeremy Roach in, and we can't actually even get a rebound. Another two points for Sarvin, and Mark Williams just looked absolutely lost there. Uh, G.J. Stewart going in, and he will find two. Two points, an easy two for D.J. Stewart. Making it 12-10, to 10, still in favor of Coppin State at the moment. Duke looking to avoid the upset that plagued UVA the other day. And this is going to be a long three-pointer for Coppin State, but the rebound down to D.J. Stewart, and he is out in transition at the moment. Stewart probing, looking for Matthew Hurt, who, and he almost throws it out of bounds. Okay, this looks a little sloppy from Duke here in the early going. And Goldwire in, okay, Mark Williams with the nice alley-oop there. We'll get that replay here in a second. Uh, that's exactly what we expect Mark Williams to bring. At seven feet, he is just taller than basically anybody on the court. That is an easy assist from Goldwire to Williams. And Duke now tying it up here. Williams playing way too far out, actually. That three-pointer is no good by Coppin State. As the rebound down to Goldwire, and the Blue Devils are out in transition. To DJ Stewart, back to Goldwire. Inside to Matthew Hurt, and Hurt will draw a foul. Hurt trying to match up against Anthony Tark. And this is the replay here. That was the, the replay to... Mark Williams uh, going up above the rim for this one. Easy alley-oop. I mean, at seven feet, he just he can do basically anything, and especially against someone like Coppin State that just doesn't have the size. I mean, the game's going to be a little different against Michigan State on Tuesday, I would expect. Michigan State actually, like, you know, Tom is a team. You expect to have some size down low. But right now, Mark Williams can just have his way with it as DJ Stewart finds himself a little pinned down. Sorry, Roach. Uh has to get it out, and it's another turnover for Duke. Bad pass by Wendell Moore. Ends up in the bench of Coppin State. A little sloppy early. Two turnovers here for the Blue Devils in the early going. Coppin State again diving in, and they will score. So that is 14 to 12 at the moment. I have to figure out exactly who. We'll fix the stats here at the uh, under 12 timeout. Uh, Roach playing point right now for Duke. That is pretty much expected. Uh, he was coming in as a highly recruited point guard. A true point guard, uh, more like DJ Stewart, is more of a combo guard. He can pl both play point and shoot it. Jeremy Roach, more of the pure point guard that we've sort of been missing. Well, we had Trey Jones, but it's been a while since. Uh, nice to have somebody uh, to replace him out of the gate. Jalen Johnson with the rebound, and he's going to take this coast to coast. This should be an easy lay-in for Jalen Johnson, and it is. And Jalen Johnson there getting the rebound and the points on the other end. 14 all here, Duke and Coppin State. Duke still trying to find a rhythm offensively. And Coppin State, deep three-pointer. That shot is, oh my, my goodness. That shot bounces off the rim and goes in. Oh my. What? All right. Lucky shot for Coppin State there. And out in transition, that pass by DJ Stewart is picked off, but he gets back on defense. Good hustle there by the freshman. It's between him and Roach playing here in the backcourt. Once again, trying to get to Mark Williams down low. Williams gets it to Johnson outside, and Jalen Johnson for three ties this thing up. Johnson, who can score it from 
basically anywhere. The only freshman in the starting lineup here for the Blue Devils, and rightfully so, is Coppin State here takes a timeout, which will turn into the under-12 media timeout, and we'll get the stats here straight in just a second. But Johnson, uh, phenomenal player here. Um, that we is actually the first of the Duke players that we did our uh, recruit segments on. Uh, av- Jalen Johnson p- picking Duke over Kentucky and Kansas, actually averaging almost 25 points a game and five assists in high school. Can basically play positions one through four, and incredibly quick, highly versatile. The kid finishes through contact. Sensational recruit here. And the only one of the freshmen to actually get the starting nod. So, uh, I, I don't know why this uh, Gamecast refuses to update. That is really quite unfortunate. Uh, I don't know, the stats feed has been really really bonkers today. I'm not even getting the right stats here from, from the Duke side of things itself. Let's see. Thomas got five for Coppin state. Clayton has got two Sarvin with seven target with three. <clears throat> So that's your 17 all uh, Blue Devils. The uh, Blue Devil scorers here, those we've counted up correctly. It's Jalen Johnson leading the way uh, with seven. Do I think Duke will cover? I don't actually know what the line on this game was, although I do know Duke had a 97% chance of winning. Uh, so if you want to actually tell me what they... Uh, what the line was, I'll probably give you the yes or the no on that. Although at the moment, they are definitely not covering, considering the line is definitely more than even. Uh, and here's Tarke once again for three for Coppin State. Joey Baker with a good box out. Actually, Henry Coleman with a good box out down low. And this is going to be a foul called against Kobe Thomas from, uh, from Coppin State here. Great down low presence by Henry Coleman. Another big body for the Blue Devils. Six recruits coming into the season. I don't know if that's a record, but it's probably pretty close. Six freshmen plus uh, Patrick to pay the, tra- the the graduate transfer from Columbia. So seven new faces for the Blue Devil team. And here's Joey Baker in the corner off the pass by Goldwire. And Baker can't get it to fall as uh, Dewan Clayton brings down the rebound on the weak side. Uh, Joey Baker trying to step in and take a charge, but the shot will go wide. So rebound to Jalen Johnson, who's once again just going to take this coast to coast, and he almost finds Wendell Moore down low, but Wendell can't finish. Honestly, I think Jalen should have just taken that himself. He does, as we were mentioning, averaging about five assists a game in high school, so he can absolutely pass the ball. Great court vision by Jalen Johnson to find Wendell Moore. It should have been an easy two, but Wendell just doesn't finish. Uh, So unfortunate there and Duke comes up empty on that trip Goldwire now defending Clayton near the half court line and Coppin State is going to find its way into the paint here but the rebound down to Matthew Hurt as Duke now on the floor it's Goldwire Hurt Baker Moore and Johnson Hurt's going to find himself in the paint with three Coppin State Eagles and that shot is going to come up wide as Coppin State now in transition good hustle by Goldwire and the rebound down to Wendell both teams playing rather fast at the moment neither one getting anything oh that's going to be a charge that's a charge but Moore Coppin State manages to bait Wendell Moore into a charge and Wendell is headed straight to the bench yeah, he's just out of control. Even as a Duke fan, I have to acknowledge that that is properly a charge. Uh, that one is that one is properly, yeah. So four turnovers now for Duke. As now Jeremy Roach and DJ? No, just DJ Stewart back on. So only the one substitution for Duke. Coach K getting... Pretty liberal with his substitutions. I expect to see plenty of them here as Coppin State's going to try to take a three, and that three is no good. Rebound down to Baker. 
as Goldwire brings it up the court. And, ooh, dangerous pass by Matthew Hurt. But going to get away with it. It's Hurt now in the paint. Stewart on the wing. Stewart for three. Stewart can't get it. And Jalen Johnson comes up with the weak side. Rebound and finishes through contact. Johnson again everywhere today. My goodness. Nine points. Nine points so far for Johnson. Um, and he's going to come up with the steal. Johnson going to come up and DJ Stewart going to cut. No, that's uh, out of bounds, actually. Great hustle by Johnson. And it's not going to result in Duke points, but this is exactly what you love to see. Zero points, zero field goals, but I feel like that, actually, that stat, there is no way that stat is right. ESPN is way off. Jalen Johnson has seven points, nine points at the moment. I have no idea where they come up, came up with that stat. That was, okay, well, uh, the Discord idea is interesting. We will try that at the uh, at the break here. At the oh, look, give, give us till the eight-minute timeout. I'll launch Discord here in a sec. Usually it doesn't work so good because you're using like not a dedicated server to do it. And so it could destroy the bandwidth, but we'll give it a shot. I'm open to trying other suggestions because I know this ACC network is pretty much a disaster. So Goldwire blocks the three point shot and do currently 19 to 17. As Duke going to have another opportunity here. And actually just going to turn it over. That was pretty terrible. And Cobbin State going to end up with another two points. That's DeJuan Clayton. And both teams now at... Both teams at 19. DJ Stewart going to go in from the corner. Yes, Stewart for three is good. That's exactly what you expect to see from DJ Stewart. The combo guard there and great shooting ability. Duke 22, Coppin State 19. As Coppin State trying to set up its half-court game. Duke just in a straight man-to-man -man here. No, nothing fancy in Coppin State's... Uh, going to miss that one. Clayton misses. Goldwire is going to take a quick three-pointer. That's no good. Rebound down to State. And up ahead, they are running. Hurt is back in transition, and that ball is out of bounds. Keep it with State, however. Got to actually find her. Yeah. We'll see if uh, we'll see if it works in a sec. Right. And Stitt's going to be out of bounds. So we've hit the eight uh, uh, the eight minute media timeout here of the first Duke twenty two Coppin State nineteen. Okay. All right, I think it is up on uh, the Discord. Fran, uh, you're, I know you're moderating on the YouTube chat. Um, go ahead and give it a shot. Jump into the Discord, see if it works for you. Uh, and if it does, then you know, feel free to... Um, let other people know that it, that it's working for them. You should. I just created a, a voice channel, a, a general uh, channel here, and did the threw up the screen share. So, I think it, I think it works. Maybe, if it absolutely destroys my stream, uh, then it could. I think we need to edit permissions. Uh, 
controls, create invites, general permissions, synced with voice channels. Oh my gosh. I don't know why it's locked. Hold on. server settings okay we will get this squared away roles it's showing as locked for me I don't know why Okay, yes, connect, speak, uh, no, stream, there, move, voice acting. Okay, so people should be able to connect, I think. Yeah, okay, there is somebody in there now. Okay, it's been unlocked. All right, so I think that works. Uh, it's locked. I, do, I just unlocked it. I just unlocked it. But yeah, okay. So I th I think it is uh I think it is working there. As uh, Goldwire going to come up. No, Duke not going to come up with a rebound here. And that is an easy easy two-pointer for Anthony from Coppin State. 20 and here's going to be Wendell Moore going to go for 3 Wendell showing off the range here early in the season. Goldwire coming in from behind, going to come up with a steal. No, not quite. Coppin State's here, and that's Clayton's going to th go for three and going to be a foul on the floor. The ball should stay with Duke. No, actually, this foul is going to go against uh, Jordan Goldwire. Yeah, Wendell just kind of went for the steal there. Didn't, uh, didn't come up with it. He gambled on the steal, didn't come up with it, and Tark has an easy path to the basket. I don't mind the gamble there, honestly, though. It's a pretty good effort defensively, even if it does result in two points for uh, Coppin State. Uh, two point shot there in and out. Rebound down to the Blue Devils, uh, to Johnson, actually. And Roach is going to find his way in for two. Easy two points for Jeremy Roach, finding his own shot there. Nicely done, Jeremy. Three long three-pointer for Coppin State actually is no good. Rebound down. This should be a foul against a Coppin State because Johnson had rebounding position and Tark just ran into him, and it is. So that's another foul uh, from Tark there. Interesting to see how when we were doing the NBA bubble, actually all the players were lined up like on the bench. There was no separation um, on the bench them itself but here there is no duke bench it is like literally chairs spaced six feet apart from one another which is sort of an interesting twist on the whole thing i mean credit to duke is if that's how they're going to play it uh different than how we saw the nba do it though and we'll see if to see if the nba kind of adopts this new look for the for their new season Hurt's going to come up with a long-range two-point shot. Difficult shot for, for Hurt, but he manages to get it. Block by Johnson there, and it's going to be out... Keep it on this side of the floor, however. Uh, let's do... Uh... 
That should help, actually, a little bit. Jalen Johnson going way out here on Tark. It gets beat defensively, and Tark's three-pointer is no good. So in and out for Coppin State. Rebound down to DJ Stewart. So Duke having three guards. No, four. Well, yes, three guards and two forwards, if you will, between Hurt and Johnson. And Hurt, his three-point shot is good. Give him seven so far on the night. This is one of the definitely one of the looks that Duke can bring. Duke going, deciding to play small ball here. Relatively small, I suppose, when you can bring in a seven-footer off the bench. 32-21, Duke ahead. Finally. Finally, Duke actually finding a little bit of rhythm here. And uh, Goldwire going to pick up a foul. That was sort of a silly foul here at half court. Just kind of trailing the ball carrier. There was no way he was going to come up with that steal. That's all right. Five fouls for the Blue Devils so far. Got to get to seven to put Coppin State at the one and one. And Duke firmly in control at the moment. Uh, and Javier Perez, thank you very much for the sub on the YouTube side of things. Much appreciated. As there, Joey Baker going to bring the double team. Come on. I'm going to call Joey Baker with a foul there, which is a terrible foul. Considering Johnson and Baker had the ball carrier there, Tark, dead to rights at this point. It was a good double team. I don't know why that, that was. a Okay, six fouls for the Blue Devil. Next. Foul for Duke would pull put Coppin State in the bonus as a simple baseline underneath pass. 14 seconds on the shot clock for Coppin State. Duke once again trying to bring the double team. Coppin State gets this out. It's a st straightaway three-point shot. And Sean Brute, 66. Thank you very much for the sub all as well. As from the outside, yes, this is a wide-open shot for DJ Stewart, and he drills it. DJ Drilling the three-pointer from the right wing. Duke seems to be favoring that right wing. We've seen uh, Baker hit it from there. Well, we've seen DJ now actually hit two of them from there. So that seems to be his spot. And as Coppin State is going to try to answer with the three of their own, that hits off the front iron and the rebound down to DJ Stewart, who's looking for Jeremy Roach. No, he's actually just going to find Joey Baker. He's going to go over the straightaway three, and Baker's going to go back iron. No good there. Rebound to Coppin State, and they will come up with this. That's going to be a foul on Matthew. No, is that, yes, actually, it is going to be a foul on Matthew. Good defensive hustle, though. See, that's the foul that I don't really care about, although this would have put Coppin State in the post. We have hit the under four timeout, and DJ is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Both DJ and Jalen Johnson are making a name for themselves early here. These two freshmen, Jalen Johnson, we sort of knew was going to be big. Um, I mean, the highly lauded five-star recruit, uh, the guy is an absolute bucket. Uh, DJ Stewart also putting on a good show, and Matthew Hurt with seven points. It's a nice start for him uh, as well. So we do actually, it seems to be working on the, uh, seems the stream does seem to be working on the Discord. I had to lower it a little bit, but it seems to be working there. And just get quickly caught up. I gotta fix my stats feed here. The hard part about some of these teams is you have no idea. Like on the cop Duke, we know who's like playing, but when you do stats for the other teams, I don't actually know which of their players are actually playing. Um, Uh, Jamin, uh, Jamin Breakfield has not played yet, uh, Aryan Serve. Uh, he's actually the only freshman who hasn't come off the bench right now. Uh, we've seen Henry Coleman. We've seen Mark Williams. They haven't scored, uh, but we've seen them. Uh, DJ Stewart and Jeremy Roach have gotten more significant minutes. Uh, Tape has, we haven't seen it at all. 
and Johnson is just basically lighting it up at this point. Uh, so. Yeah. I actually sort of agree here. I think break. I really want to see Breakfield because well, he was one of the ones we did more recently on our like recruit series. But like he just he looks really good. I like the way he's a very similar game to Jalen Johnson, actually, kind of if, if you compare the two. And I know they played on the same team when they were doing the like, Nike AAU ball. So I'm really interested to see if there's like actual chemistry between if you put Breakfield and Johnson out on the court at the same time, like what happens. And so that's the one I'm actually very curious about. But I'm con yeah, I'm concerned about Breakfield's minutes, although I think, depending on what happens in practice, I would love to see him out on the court. So, but yeah, we like when we did our recruit video, I think everybody was pretty much on the same page that Breakfield is a multi-year player. Um, like we'll probably see him uh, sophomore at least in a sophomore season, maybe a junior season. But here, Jalen Johnson, nine points. Perfect so far from the field and nine rebounds. So basically, he's at a double-double with four minutes to go in the first in his opening game. No nerves or jitters for this kid. It's a great drive by Jeremy Roach and a beautiful find, even better find for Matthew Hurt. Give Roach the assist. Give Matthew Hurt the and one. Duke firmly in control at the moment. 37-21 with Hurt going into the bench. And this is something we didn't see as much from Hurt last year. We said he's put on weight. That spin move down low in the paint. He's now he actually has the ability to bully folks down low, which we would have never said last year. Because, let's face it, he was basically a stick. Like how skinny he was. But he's looking much better this year. He does end up missing the free throw, which is unfortunate. And that is an easy take by Coppin State. And DeJuan Clayton has six so far. Duke still ahead by 14. As it's now, again, Duke with the smaller lineup. All right? You got Roach, Stewart, Johnson, Baker, and Hurt. Basically, Anybody on this team can shoot it, and the deflection by Compton State lands in the hands of Baker as Matthew Hurt tries to go in, and he can't get it. Baker once again going to try for three. Nope, pass it up to Hurt. Two seconds on the shot clock. Hurt's got to take this mid-range jump shot, and he drills it. 11 points for Hurt to lead all Blue Devils so far today. Three minutes to go here in the first. With the shot clock expiring, a beautiful looking mid range jump shot. My goodness. And they're actually taking a look at it. The super slow mo here. Uh, I don't know if he got that off. Uh, you worried about next? Well, so we only know of two people so far that have uh, signed for next year's recruiting class. Um, and I thought the there's the, the Paolo, right? The, the kid out of, out of Washington. I thought he was a point guard. So I'm not immediately, um, I'm not immediately concerned about, about it. Uh, what I am concerned with is actually getting through the season. Oh, Paolo's a center. Hmm. I am concerned about getting through the season. Uh, that's the first thing I'm concerned about. Um, considering that we've seen with the other sports, aside from the NBA, which set up their own bubble and they had everything sort of squared away, right? Um, I mean, the NFL has been, is having some issues, especially this week, given the Raven Steelers, uh, game. I, I just hope that those issues aren't pervasive in the college game either, as Jeremy Roach is going to pick up a foul here. Um, on the dive by Coppin State, and that will put Coppin State on the free throw line. They're going to shoot a one and one unless that's declared a shooting foul, which it might be, in which case they'll shoot two. Um, <laughs> Jordan Reinhardt is a huge fan. Uh, can, can you say hi? Sure. Hi, Jordan. 
<laughs> we love to have all the Duke fans around. Really excited to see Duke back in action as the first free throw by Clayton is good. So 24 points, and Clayton's going to have another shot at it here. Uh, so far, he is perfect from the line. Three of three, make it four of four, as Cabin State's got 25. And somehow I get... Oh, actually, so they, they took the two points away from Matthew Hurt. The official review was that the ball was not out of his hands before the shot clock expired, which is really unfortunate because it was a really pretty shot. So, yeah. Uh, DJ Stewart now with eight points, handling the ball. This is such an easy... What a beautiful give and go... From Jalen Johnson. And Jalen Johnson now has 11. So he's now leading all Duke scorers. Great two-man game there between Stewart and Johnson. Joey Baker guarding out on the perimeter. Jeremy Roach now. This is a wide-open three-point shot for State, and they can't hit it. Duke a little late on the rotation, getting back to, to the open shooter. Roach looking for a diving hurt. Doesn't find him. Baker. Baker. Lazy pass. Lazy pass by Baker. That gets picked off by State. God damn it, Joey. Ugh. And now Matthew Hurt's going to make up for it as he's going to uh, pick this pass off in transition. Take a little Euro step and a... What? Going to get called for a travel? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Come on, ref. What? What is this? There's the give and go. I want to look at the travel again. Okay, so here... They're going to call this a travel? That's really weird. Yeah, people forget Jalen was the number four player before he left. I mean, Jalen Johnson is, like, really good. <laughs> really good. Like, and he's... So far, he's he's lived up to it. Yeah. Lonzo, the diehard Duke fan. Love it. Love it. Yeah, so basketball with less people also, I sort of agree, right? You only have to worry about a team of, like, 11. Uh, 11, 12. Like, the actual team itself is, like, 11 or 12. And then the, the like, five coaching staff. Um, so. Clayton at the free throw line again. And he will make two. So give Coppin State 27. As Duke coming up the court here. Jeremy Roach playing point guard for the Blue Devils. And again, an easy give to Jalen Johnson. And Johnson will be fouled. A little concerning Duke hasn't take, has taken actually just one free throw and missed it. Uh, usually we're really good at getting at the line. Or getting to the line. And having more makes than opponent takes. Um... My devil is blue. Blue devil nation. Love it. Jalen Johnson now going to have this opportunity at the free throw line. He's got 11 points and 10 rebounds. And we've only, haven't even hit the halftime. So 12 points right now after that free throw. So he already has a double-double in his first game as a Duke freshman. I wonder if the fact that there's no crowd, I can't quite tell if that makes, like, more or less jitters, I suppose playing in front of an empty gym. Although I do like what Duke's done with the uh, with the Cameron Crazy section. With like it's not just cutouts, but it's like a full like full length uh, poster, if you will. And Jeremy Roach should have been fouled. Roach should have been fouled. That is a horrible no call. And that's gonna be called a blocking foul on this end. That is oh god. Commissary gonna go to the free throw line again as Hurt ends up on the floor. I don't, I don't know about this one. There, like, that's a no, like, okay, that's, that's the block, but, like, I thought I had a hotkey for, is it that? I'll have to check what my hotkeys are. Yeah, it's definitely weird with no crowd at the game. Because Cameron would be rocking on these Jalen Johnson, like it, like especially for like a freshman first game. Okay, and here is Jamin Breakfield. He is somebody uh, was the chat was asking where's Jamin. Jamin is now in the game, subbed in here at the minute and nine mark. As uh, Sarvan gets one out of two free throws, so now we have Jeremy Roach, Jalen Johnson, DJ Stewart, Joey Baker, and Jamin. 
who's basically playing the five. And this is a really tough take. And the putback by Johnson with the cleanup as Roach can't finish. Johnson comes in right after him and slams it home. 15 points for Johnson, and that three-pointer is way off by Coppin State. Like, it never had a chance. Roach to Baker. Give it give it to Jamin. Yeah, Jamin now going to drive baseline. He draws two. Roach, wide open three from the top of the wing, and DJ Stewart follows it up off the miss. Beautiful play by Stewart. 45 points here in the first half for Duke. I said, we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. I was a little concerned. I was a little concerned about how the freshmen would come out and play. The freshmen have been gamers so far. Jamin playing some pretty good defense up at the top. It's five seconds. Coppin State's going to have the last shot, but DJ Stewart blocks it down low. State still hustling, and that is it. That is the end of one. Duke 45, Coppin State 28. Jalen Johnson just absolutely everywhere. And all right. And we have hit the halftime. I wish we were playing San Francisco. <laughs> no, I do not wish we were playing San Francisco. Well, although I suppose it's very unlikely that a team will upset a top 10 team twice consecutively. Uh, so the fact that San Francisco won, uh, beat UVA... Um, so the interesting piece about uh, about the UVA one is is usually we have like so one of the folks that we that we call games or does uh, does stats for us he's has an analysis for us he has a uh, he has a a rule what he calls the rule of seventy which basically means that in order to beat UVA you got to put up seventy points and this it seems to like make sense for every like no matter who the UVA team is, just as long as they're being coached by Tony Bennett. Uh, but San Francisco actually only had to put up 61. So, um, which is very interesting that UVA couldn't even come up with that 70-point that mark. They definitely got caught off guard. So, yeah, I, I don't think there is going to be an upset here today. Um, however, we've had some notable, uh, other notable score lines. Of course, the Kansas Gonzaga game. I see Jack in chat, his Kansas Jayhawks, unfortunately falling to Gonzaga, uh, by a score of 102 to 90 behind 24 points from Jalen Suggs. So Gonzaga looks pretty good after its first two games. Of course, the concern there though, is that, uh, some of the folks from the Gonzaga team were talking about the whole like COVID and actually getting through the season. Apparently there's been some COVID concerns with Gonzaga. So hopefully, um, hopefully the Kansas team is okay. Um, yeah. Gonzaga played Baylor next week. If they actually end up playing and there isn't, uh, more COVID concerns there uh, on that, on that same topic, uh, we had sort of funny Mike Bray, uh, from Notre Dame, basically putting out an ad on Twitter, uh, basically saying, uh, Notre Dame will play, somebody please call us so that our basketball team can play you, uh, because we do not have an opponent for next week. Uh, I guess they, uh, they whoever they were going to play has canceled on them, and they were like, so Notre Dame apparently will travel to uh, somebody. Yeah, uh, Gonzaga versus Baylor and Kansas versus, right. So the Champions Classic coming up on Tuesday night. Uh, so what they're referring to here, not Gonzaga versus Baylor, but the Kansas-Kentucky game is part of the Champions Classic. That is on uh, that is on Tuesday. That is going to be the game after the Duke-Michigan State game. Um, the Discord link should be in the description below. Uh, or... Uh, Let's see. The Discord link should be in the description below, or at some point I can try to find it. I can also try to find it here. Uh, yep. Uh, 
there it is. There's the Discord link. Uh, you can either type that into your actual Discord app, or I'm pretty sure it might work in a browser. Um, I that part I haven't tried. I haven't tried actually doing it in a browser, but I do know it works. Uh, it works if you do if you actually open the Discord application. We have several folks in there right now, um, so uh, feel free to jump on. It does seem to be working there, uh, as far as the, the the live stream. If you if you do need a live feed, uh, so uh, let's get caught up on the stats here at the halftime. I believe we are up to date. Uh, I believe we're up to date on the Coppin State side of things. We have Kobe Thomas. No, I need them sorted this way. Thank you. Uh, Anthony Tark with five points. Kobe Thomas with five points. Uh, Clayton. Hmm. That doesn't seem to be right. I have Clayton with ten. The official. Uh, the official stat feed should be different. Showing me something different. Nope, it is right. I am right. Uh, Daquan Clayton with 10, and Keenan Sarvin with 8, which gives Coppin State the 28 points so far that they have. Thoughts on the San Fran upset? Very surprising. I, like, of all teams, like UVA, I suspect that I would have thought Tony Bennett had his team ready to play, and clearly not enough. Um... Such a hard team to beat, especially at home. I mean, the uh, the game. If you want to jump on the Discord, uh, that's where we've uh, we've got the game. I'm trying to avoid getting uh, copyrighted on the YouTube. Um, for the Duke side of things, though, uh, looking really looking pretty good. Uh, defensively, a little sloppy. Uh, a couple sort of mm, not so good passes, but. The points are there. Wendell Moore with five. Um, uh, uh, J sorry, Jalen Johnson with 15 points and 11 rebounds so far in his freshman debut. The only freshman to get the starting nod for the Blue Devils. Looking fantastic here in the early going. DJ Stewart as well. He's got 10 points and uh, a single assist so far. He's looking pretty good. He's got two three-pointers from the right wing, so the three-point shot working for DJ Stewart. Jeremy Roach with three assists to go with Jordan Goldwire's three assists. That's exactly how we expect Roach's stat line to look, and, and he's got two points. So two points, three assists, that stat line looks looks right uh, for right now. Joey Baker's got two points. Uh, Goldwire, no points, but three assists, so I'm okay with that on the assists there. Uh, Mark Williams has an easy two-point alley-oop. He got some minutes, and Matthew Hurt has nine. Hurt looking pretty good. Should have had 11, but they ruled a uh, shot did not leave his hand in time, and it was instead a shot clock violation. Basically, pretty much everyone except for the walk-ons has gotten, uh, and Tape has gotten in the game for Duke. So far, um, this is not unexpected early in the season, given how Coach K loves to play with his lineups. And usually, if this were a regular season, like non-COVID season, we would be seeing a lot of very different lineups throughout the non-conference part of Duke's season. Usually, when we hit conference play, starting in late December and January, which has basically been condensed. So it's going to start like within the next few weeks. Um, and so little Bron, so the game is on our discord channel as on our discord. If you want to uh, look at it or to watch, feel free to jump in there. Um, the uh, yeah, Duke would play with a ton of starting uh, different starting lineups. And then it finally kind of settle on like a six, seven, or maybe eight man rotation. Once we got into serious conference play, especially later on, especially tournament time. Um, except this year is a little different. Like Duke literally has viable like lineups. If you go like nine or 10 deep, like even, even like Breakfield was the last of the freshmen to actually get on the court, but like, he's a sensational player too. Like all of these, they can all play. Um, no, my, the, our discord is, is, is not a scam. <laughs> no. Um, Carla Bailey, thank you very much for the uh, sub on YouTube. 
uh there is no ads i'm not selling you anything i am just we're just here because we're passionate duke fans <laughs> there is literally nothing else about like nothing else to it um but literally so duke can play li- like nine or ten deep i would be very disappointed to see k and the coaching staff shrink the rotation to like seven or eight guys because like this season i'd be very disappointed if i saw that now granted like depends on whether or not they deserve playing time but right but everybody certainly has the skill to deserve to be able to get the playing time so the interesting one is we haven't seen anything from tape and like he wasn't even they they also sort of announced like second like what the second lineup would be and he wasn't even there so i'm very curious to see what the deal is with tape I mean, he's a grad transfer, which is kind of rare at Duke, uh, to be honest. So I have to see where that fits in. And let's just check in on some of the other scores today. What other games are people looking out for? Right, so we were looking at... We were looking ahead to Gonzaga and Baylor. The, here's like the headline right here: two Gonzaga players out due to COVID issues. So even though one versus two are actually going to play, uh, Clay Shell, thank you very much for the YouTube subscription as well. Much appreciated. Thank you, everybody. Uh, even though like you know number two and Baylor and number one Gonzaga are going to play, will Gonzaga be at full strength? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Temple and Butler pausing after COVID-19 positive. So again, I just want to get through the season. Like we've waited long enough for college basketball to get back. Let's just actually have, and God forbid they cancel another NCAA tournament. That would be horrible. Um, Gosh, what players are out for Gonzaga? Let's see. So what are we looking at? Uh, Gonzaga held two players out of uh, Friday's win over Auburn. Basically saying, uh, Oh, uh, Dominic Harris uh, is, be, is one of them. Um, said one player tested positive, another was held out being in close contact. The school didn't actually say which was which, so the only one we know is the possibility is Dominic Harris, because apparently his dad tweeted uh, or said something. So, which is which is quite concerning. Uh, but apparently Kansas said that its game yesterday was good to go, so no issues there for for the Jayhawks. That's their other top recruit he played with. Okay, all right, gotcha. I should be getting ready to come out of halftime here in just a second. trying to see what other interesting games there should be more interesting games it's saturday like why aren't more top ranked teams playing or they all played yesterday like literally i'm looking at the schedule like uh like duke number nine is the only ranked team playing today and we got pushed all the way to the acc network extra what the what is this oh wait no we got ba- okay we got uh baylor uh, at five villanova at five uh, zero west coast times so uh, there is prime time okay prime time games baylor gonna play tonight nova gonna play tonight actually look we got two acc teams going up against top ranked competition tonight virginia tech gonna travel to villanova um and apparently yeah this is going to be played in connecticut they're doing a tournament there at uh at mohegan sun so they're not actually traveling and uh notre dame will travel to michigan state and play in the breslin center today that's on the big 10 network that might be an interesting game to watch just to see how michigan state comes out to play considering that we have to play them on tuesday um and we will definitely have i will definitely be live for that game a lot to look forward to yes let's uh the the discord link let me get you and then there's a question about joey baker uh there's the discord link um there's the discord link and uh let's see so what was the question 
Uh, how do you watch the game on Discord? You just jump into the voice channel. So there is a channel called General in the Discord, and it should pop up my uh, a screen share. Uh, nobody can actually like talk in it, but you can you can watch uh, from it. So, uh, where was the Joey Baker? Uh, do you think Joey Baker is going to be number one pick in the 2021 draft? Uh, no, I do not think Joey Baker is going to be. We might have a top pick in Jalen Johnson, though, the way that he's been playing today. Uh, but I unfortunately, I don't think Joey Baker is it. Uh, so far, here we are back here. 15 points, 11 rebounds so far for Johnson. Um, Sharfy Cooper. I need to... I can't see it right now. Why not? Uh, I need to look that up. I don't know... Oh, this is Auburn? Awaits NCAA eligibility ruling. Huh. Did not travel with Auburn. That's weird. Hasn't practiced until he awaits investigation to his eligibility. His review is ongoing. Interesting. Oh, wow, they were part... Oh, this was part of, like, the bribery scandal back in 2017? Yikes. Oh, my God, big yikes. Well, if, so apparently Auburn can't even... Oh, well, apparently Auburn has a postseason ban anyway, so... Damn. He was ranked... Cooper's representatives have contacted professional teams in Europe and Australia in case the NCAA does not clear him to play. Interesting. So his like status as an amateur, I suppose, is um, his status as an amateur is sort of up in the air or like in question. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, self-imposed postseason ban for for Auburn. Huh. Well, then they they definitely know they did something wrong there. Uh, as we've tipped this thing back off here, we are in the second. Uh, Duke leading at 45-28, and that should be a charge. And instead, it's a no call. Um, the same starting five? No, different starting five here for the Blue Devils uh, at the in the second half. It's actually uh, DJ Stewart has gotten the starting nod, so he is in, and Joey Baker is out. Baker started the game, but will not start the second half, and DJ Stewart is in his place. Otherwise, the lineup remains the same with Goldwire, Matthew Hurt, Jalen Johnson, Wendell Moore uh, as the other four. Um, uh, the game is on our Discord, Carlos, if you want to jump into Discord. Uh, you can definitely uh, watch there. Uh, we don't show the game on the YouTube's, uh, like, actual YouTube broadcast to avoid uh, getting copyrighted. One day, maybe. One day, maybe. In the future. But uh, until we get there and they overhaul the incredibly archaic uh, laws around copyright, uh, that is not going to happen. As the three from Coppin State is good. That's a three-point shot by Kobe Thomas. And Coppin State, first one to strike here in the second. Jalen Johnson gets this stripped. This is going to be an easy run out. Terke, oh boy. Two points for Terke. It's a quick five for Coppin State here as they've cut the lead down to 12. I think Coach is going to call a timeout, and yes, he is. That is exactly what Coach does. Um, because he cannot be happy the way that Duke has come up. And the mask is off, actually. Uh I don't like we uh, when we broadcast the NFL games on Thursday nights, we usually be like, well, he's going to get a fine for taking his mask off. I don't know if there's a fines for Coach K taking his mask off, but he was not too happy about the way that Duke came out here in the second. Uh, Jack says found a guy paying parents to use a certain agent that persuade the kids to go to Auburn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. They, uh, that'll do it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think Jeremy Roach is, is, uh, is a number one pick either. Um, I, I, could, he, could he be a lottery pick? Sure. 
right? I think there's a plenty of Duke players that could be a lottery pick. Um, could they be number one? We have a long season to go. These guys got to stay healthy, uh, both in terms of don't get COVID, uh, and two, like, don't get another injury. This was the first time, uh, what was it, in years that, I can't remember the exact number, but in years that either Kansas, Duke, Kentucky didn't have uh, a top pick, right, in the lottery. Duke Duke's picks, Trey Jones, Vernon Carey, Cassius Stanley, all went in the second round, uh, which is, which was interesting, which was interesting. Um, I just, I thought maybe Trey had a, had a decent, or at least Vernon, because of the size, uh, had a decent chance of going in the first round. Uh, Trey being an excellent defender, but maybe not as good a shooter, and the NBA being sort of predominantly shooting league, I guess, uh, you know, wasn't wasn't valued as highly, although he did just today sign a three-year deal with the San Antonio Spurs. So actually for Trey Jones, like life's pretty good, I would I would say. If you like end up in San Antonio with Greg Popovich on a three-year deal, I think you're doing okay for yourself. Like it's pretty good. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about Trey Jones. Vernon going to go to the Charlotte Hornets and cash the Stanley to the Indiana Pacers. Uh, still to be seen. We'll see if uh, if uh, Stanley actually uh, if there spends time in the G League or he uh, goes straight uh, to uh, to the to the team. Uh, and Jack saying that the that the Suggs kid from Gonzaga looked like a star against Kansas. Yeah, I I'll have to tune. No, I won't get to tune in today. I'll have to try to uh, find the uh, definitely that the Gonzaga Baylor game and take a look there. Duke's defense getting a little lackluster here. I mean, Jalen Johnson just gets that ball stripped from him. The ki- I mean, Johnson, you're 6'8", buddy. And, like, you got this, like, 6'3 guard that just, like, takes the ball away. Come on. Substitutions here for Duke. Actually, no, no substitutions. Coach K leaves. And another terrible pass. Goldwire just gives it to Coppin State coming out of a Duke timeout. And Johnson from behind with a massive block. But gets called for a foul. That's really anticlimactic. Wow, that's disappointing. Wow. Uh, Jigglypuff, where's my brother? I'm not sure. He's lurking in chat somewhere. I think he's moderating today. Yeah. Uh, Coppin State going to inbound this. Uh, actually, okay. And uh, Coppin State has lost a shoe. As <laughs> one of the Coppin State players has lost their shoe on the court. And so he is playing with basically one foot. Uh, Clayton for... Uh, Yes, Clayton for Coppin State hits from three. So Coppin State now has the first eight points of the second half and has cut the lead to nine. Not that I'm panicking or anything, but like, this is not a good start for the Blue Devils, who actually ended the first half really strong. Hurt's going to try for three. That's going to hit the rim and go basically off the backboard. And Jalen Johnson gets stripped again. Coppin State's got an opportunity. In there, it's three on one. Coppin State's going to get a blocking foul, and that is going to be two shots for Coppin State, who now has a chance to bring it down to seven. What is going on? <laughs> this is nuts. Um. Oh, I have not seen this, Jack. You're saying Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn, the head coach and GM of the Lions, have been relieved. Wow. Uh, so change is going on in the NFL there. That is about, what, halfway through the season. Well, that makes the second coach now uh, tossed in the middle of the season. Bill O'Brien, after four games, tossed in Houston. Houston's still not kind of, like, still kind of just as, not as good as they were before, uh, even before they fired him. Uh, but, okay, Matt Patricia... Uh, uh, gone. Whew. Former Patriot uh, defensive coordinator. As Coppin State misses both free throws, luckily, Duke gets out of that bit of a jam. Still, no points for the Blue Devils. We've played two minutes and 15 seconds in the second half. Just a lot of turnovers. Inside pass from Goldwire to DJ Stewart, who finishes for two. Nice point guard to point guard, or guard to guard passing there. And the two shots, two point shot, no good for Coppin State. Wendell Moore going to bring this up the court. DJ Stewart's going to go for three. Stewart, that's short. Uh, Matthew Hurt going to get called for a foul. No, he's going to get the rebound. Johnson going to get the follow. And Johnson now with 17 from the pass 
off the pass from Matthew, which really was more of a desperation pass. But it works anyway. Duke, once again, up to 13 with the lead. Quick four points for the Blue Devils, as that should have been close to a travel by Coppin State, but not called. State now setting up a half-court game. They've got eight seconds on the shot clock to take this. And they will take a corner three, and that is actually good. Three points for Nenda Tark from Coppin State, which brings the lead down to 10 as that pass is intercepted. Wendell Moore tried to get it to Johnson on the baseline, who was going to go for an alley-oop. The pass wasn't high enough, and we get it slammed on our heads as Tark again. Now the lead is at 8. Another sloppy play there uh, by Duke. Well intended, poorly executed. Jesus. This is not a good second half. This is not a good second half. Duke looks young. Duke looks young here in the second half. Like, I think we were able to kind of blitz cop and state a little bit and just kind of shock them into the, uh, the lead that we built because we were playing so well offensively. But, wow, we have really sort of caved over here in the second. I mean, yeah, we look, we got this. I'm not saying this is an upset in the making, but like Coppin State definitely coming out here. And, you know, this could be kind of the, the fact that there are no fans, right? One of the things about coming in to play in Cameron, it like is the atmosphere, especially if you're a road team. Duke, well, okay, that non-conference losing streak is ended. Uh, so, <laughs> so like that's not a thing anymore. But, like, right, Duke had a 10-year winning streak against non-conference opponents in Cameron. No, more than 10 years. It was, like, almost two, two decades worth. And that's another sloppy pass. Duke's just going to get this out of bounds. Another sloppy pass by Goldwire results in a turnover. How many turnovers are we at at this point? Coach K is, cannot be happy about this. Is This is bad. Uh, team stats. Where are my turnovers? Nine. Nine. Nine turnovers so far for Duke. Actually, that was from the first half. Now we definitely have at least 13, would be my guess. Or the stats feed is just not going to update for me, and so that's going to be brutal. Uh, yeah, turnover going the other way. Wendell with an easy two. Finally, some bucket in transition for Wendell Moore. 51-41. Duke ahead here as we're about to hit the 16-minute uh, timeout. Duke in transition again, playing fast. Goldwire with a runner in the lane. Can't get it. Way too tough of a shot. Should have just taken the three instead. Coppin State out running again. Tark up ahead. Tark with the lane. No good. But he will go to the free throw line for two shots when we come back out of this commercial break. Duke, KU, Kentucky, UNC, Michigan State. We'll all miss amazing environments. Yeah, especially like KU is talking about Fog Island Fieldhouse in, in, in Kansas. Like, as a non-conference team, and granted, this is like Coppin State's an unranked team. Like, they can they can ball, for sure. They've been balling. Clearly, they've got us within 10 points. But I have to believe that if, like, if the Cameron, if the crazies were there and the atmosphere was... And this was like a normal season. Like Duke would have could have come out of the locker room and just like blown this thing wide open. Um, but we can't. Uh, also, there are no there aren't even any students on campus anymore. Everybody got sent home because essentially what Duke did was usually what Duke does is we take a break in uh, October for three days, and then we take a break in thanks for Thanksgiving, and that's like you get a week off between those two breaks. You get a week off in the semester. Duke did away with all that since they didn't want students traveling back and forth, which is the right decision. And so they ended, they basically ended the semester before Thanksgiving and sent everyone home. And so there wouldn't even be students. Uh, even if you tried, did try to do like, you know, let's put six feet between everybody and just like see how many people we can get in the, uh, in the stadium. Not that Duke would have done that, but in theory you could have, but there are no students at Duke anyway. Uh, right now, so you can't do that either. Um, I'm going to try to update my stats here, because this is... Come on, the stats feed is, like, totally not working for me. 
Mm. Finally, here we go. Yeah, okay. It was nine turnovers. It was nine turnovers in the entirety of the first half, which is not not good, right? You kind of like, you don't really want to be in the double-digit turnovers of the whole game, but like nine and a half. Okay, we can live with it if you're up 15. Uh, we have seven turnovers in the last four minutes because uh, we're now up to 16. So that's how sloppy the first four minutes of this half have been. Um, it is a Duke with seven turnovers, which is just awful. Oh my God. I can't even, I like, I can hardly believe that. Uh, let me get the, the personal foul situation here. Wendell's got three. Stewart's one. Roach is one. Baker and Goldwire got two fouls apiece. And Hurt has... Wow, okay. So Hurt's got three fouls. Interesting. Oddly enough... Oh, yeah. Only, the freshmen only have two. Let's see. On the Coppin State side of things, it's Tark with two... Basically, Common State doesn't have any foul trouble at all. Nothing to really worry about there on the Common State side of things. Uh, and so we are 12 and 5. There we go. Cool. All right, we're up to date. And uh, Tyler Thomas, 42, actually with a follow on Twitch. I didn't even know I was live on Twitch, which is weird. I don't even know if I am. That's weird. But thank you. <laughs> uh, sometimes my brother keeps the like the broadcast on both sides. We we simulcast on Twitch and YouTube. Um, but I don't know. Uh, Tark's free throw is no good. So Coppin State doing us a favor and going ahead and miss free throws. We're back from the under the 16 minute media timeout. Uh, Coppin State trailing Duke by 10, but coming out with a quite a run here as Anthony Tark puts himself into double digits with that free throw. So uh, now only trailing by nine. It's Jeremy Roach. Yeah, that's a foul. That's a foul. Absolutely. Foul on Nenda Tark. That's his first. And it should be that way. We'll set the floor for everybody here. Uh, yeah, on the second half, they're 5 of 9. Coppin State is on a 14 to 7 run at the moment. Setting the floor here for the Blue Devils, it's DJ Stewart, Jeremy Roach, Matthew Hurt, Wendell Moore, uh, and Jalen Johnson. And that Jalen Johnson with a beautiful pass to DJ Stewart, who drills it. Remember, we talked about the court vision from Johnson and his versatility on the court, you can basically play him at just about any position. The assist there from Johnson, who finds an open three-point shooter in DJ Stewart. DJ now has three three-point shots. That is a huge benefit to Duke. I do... This is an opportunity. This team has an opportunity as Coppin State just drives in wildly, and I think they're going to lose the ball there. Or they're going to actually keep it on this end. Duke has a huge opportunity to get back to some of, like its roots I would say with this drive and kick Johnson driving baseline kicking it out to a wide open three-point shooter who drills it I mean that is quintessential Duke basketball from the early what 2010s from the going back I'm going back to the Shire like Shire Nolan Smith Kyle Singler days like and even before that right like folks with like Redick and I mean that is that is beautiful Duke basketball uh I can't quite tell if Duke's in his zone at the moment kind of looks like they are as uh, Coppin State shoots right over it. And so they're still within 10. Uh, still a close game here with about 15 minutes to go in the second. Joey Baker now on the court who throws this one out of bounds. God, Joey Baker. Oh, my God. Coach K definitely does not like coaching with the mask. We can, You can definitely tell. <laughs> Um, that was bad. Man. Uh, 9-3. Oh, let's see. All right. Tark has 9. 3-8. 13. 8. 
And three-point shot from Coppin State goes again. So 47. No, so Tark's three-point shot, he's got 13. He might actually have more. We'll have to correct that feed here in a second. Wendell Moore drives in, gets stuffed, gets his own gets the block back to himself. DJ Stewart driving into the paint, and DJ Stewart going to get for two. 17 points tonight for DJ Stewart to tie a team high with Jalen Johnson. The two freshmen, Stewart and Johnson, showing out tonight for the Blue Devils so far. And Coppin State going to take another three-pointer. That's off the front eye and rebound down to Stewart as he has numbers. Uh, and... No good. Joey Baker is off on the shot. Rebound down to State, and State's just running with this. That should have been a travel there, as State's going to get start. Uh, what is it? Sarvan going to try for three, and that's going to come up long. And Jeremy Roach bringing down the rebound. Slow it down, folks. Slow it down. Yeah, Coppin State, their three-point field goal percentage in the first half with three for 19. In the second half, they're four of seven, which is why this lead is nine only for Duke. They definitely cut this thing... It was almost at 20 when we hit the halftime. G.J. Stewart again for three. That's off back iron. And Wendell Moore gets boxed out by a smaller defender. That is not good effort. As the two-point take and Tar... No, and the, sorry, Daquan Clayton gets two and comes up limping. He looked like a bit of a cramp there. He is not going to go to the bench, though. He's okay. So never like to see any injuries or anything. Yeah, ESPN's not updating. Uh, the score is 56-47. Duke ahead. 56-49, actually. 56-49. Uh, so Duke by 7 with 12.46 to go. Uh, and, yeah, I agree. My, my stats feed is also stalled. It has something to do with, like, ACC Network that just, like, is, like second tier. Um, beautiful look, DJ Stewart with a tough reverse and the finish. Stewart doing it all for Duke at the moment. That was an assist. Give the assist to Jeremy Roach. Give the points to Jeremy Stewart. Jamin Brakefield now in the game as Goldwire gambles on a steal and comes up empty. Three-point shot for Coppin State from the wing. Oh, boy, and that goes in. Six-point game so far. Uh, Six-point game as Kobe Thomas for Coppin State hits it 58-52. Jeremy Roach gets should have been fouled. Jeremy Roach should have been fouled. And this ball is going to go right back to Coppin State. We got a six point game, 12 06. We haven't quite hit the media timeout. Wow. Jeremy Roach with a beautiful assist. DJ Stewart doing everything down low. Look at Hank. He just hangs in the air there. Great body control. Great body control. The game is on our Discord, uh, Gavin, if you want to jump in. Uh, feel free to jump into Discord. There. Uh, whoop. I had the Discord link there for a second. I'll find it. I'll grab it at the. Um, I'll grab it at the uh, at the under twelve. As Coppin State still looking to take the advantage here, and they are just going to throw that one away. Turnover by Coppin State going to give it right back to Duke, but we have a media timeout coming up. The turnover there by Anthony Tark, who's been playing actually really really well for Coppin State, uh, leading their team. Uh, here in points, and we have hit the under-16 uh, media timeout. 58-52, uh, Duke with the lead for now, uh, but what was what was almost a 20-point lead at halftime is now cut to six. Yeah, Duke was ahead by 17 points at halftime. We're now only up by six. That's the situation. And I will fix the stat feed here. Points. It still says Tark's got nine. I don't believe that's right. I don't understand how that could be right. Because those points don't add up. Three, eight, yeah. No, this is definitely wrong. There we go. 15, 3, 11, 15, and 8. Mm-hmm. So Tark, uh, Anthony Tark, and Daquan Clayton, uh, both with 15 points for Coppin State. They have 52 total. For the Duke Blue Devils, it is DJ Stewart right now who has taken the reins for Duke. He has 19 points. 19 points to go along with five rebounds. Uh, 
Jalen Johnson with 17 and 14, 17 points and 14 rebounds. The only Blue Devil with the double-double so far. Goldwire with four assists. Jeremy Roach with four assists. The, uh, the stats that I don't like to see, Jalen Johnson's got five turnovers. I can sort of excuse him a little bit for that, given his points. But Jeremy Roach with three turnovers. Goldwire with two turnovers. Uh, the ball handlers. The... Uh, Let's see. So there you go. Oh, we are. So Ryan V saying Jalen fan here. We are. Uh, we are not sleeping on your guy. I mean, Jalen Johnson has been sensational. We sort of knew that coming in. We did a sort of a we did a recruit series that's on the channel. They're, no, they're not live videos. They're just like uploads. And uh, Jalen Johnson was the first one we did, and he was, I mean, huge props to Johnson. He's he's the real deal so far. Uh, open shooter here is Goldwire, who's going to miss. Jamin Brakefield's going to get the rebound, and he's trying to go up with it, and Jamin gets fouled. So Jamin's going to go to the free throw line. Full on the floor for Duke coming out of this under-12 timeout. It's Brakefield, Johnson, Stewart, Goldwire, and Roach. Haven't seen as much of Henry Coleman. Haven't seen as much of Mark Williams. They were they did play sort of a minute, if you will, in the first. Uh, no Patrick to pay, but Jamin Brakefield here at the free throw line. The lefty oh, misses the first of his free throws. And Jamin going to get the second. So Jamin Brakefield on the board gets his first points. As a Duke Blue Devil. And now Duke coming out with a full court press, actually. Which I... Actually, I agree with this. We've basically been sleeping the entire second half. Duke's uh, Coach K's got to wake up. Jamin Brakefield with the block. Beautiful block from behind. Is now Blue Devils are on the floor. And that pass by Coppin State straight ahead. Roach. Roach. Pass it to Brakefield. Jeremy. Jeremy, buddy. Jeez. This is a beautiful block from behind. Breakfield gets to Juan Clayton. Gets Clayton from behind. And Roach should have passed this thing. I don't know what... Anyway, he ends up at the free throw line. <laughs> Saravis, thank you very much for the sub on the YouTube. Much appreciated. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. College basketball is back. Duke basketball is back. If you'd like to watch the game, it's on the it's in our Discord. Uh, jump in. We've put the link in chat a few times. It's also in the description of the video below. And Jeremy Roach's uh, shot is no good. Um, or actually, Roach makes one out of two. So 60 to 52. Still an eight-point game here with 10:51 to go. I just say I've liked what I've seen today from Johnson. I've liked what I've seen from DJ Stewart. Uh, Goldwire needs to clean up the turnovers a little bit. Breakfield playing really a defense almost at half court here. Good defense by Brakefield, actually. He's swishing off. Duke basically switching everything. Leaves a wide-open three-point shooter, and that shot is no good. As Jamin's going to take a wide-open three himself, but that shot by Jamin, no good either. Jeremy Roach with the rebound, and Roach gets fouled. It's going up. So that is a shooting foul. Roach will shoot two. First shot. Oh, Jesus, Jeremy. Ugh, he misses that one. I need point guards that can actually hit free throws, please. Please. 
It's so painful to watch your point guard step up to the free throw line and uh, miss two of them in a close game. Oh, my goodness. Jeremy Roach, one of four from the free throw line in his last two trips. Big yikes. This is pretty good D by Brakefield, actually. It's a wide open three point shot. And Coppin State can't hit it. So after going four of seven to start the second half, Coppin State has gone cold from the free throw line as DJ Stewart dives in. And that is going to be a out of bounds on Brakefield. Turnover number, what, if, what are we at now? 17 for Duke. God. If we play this way against Michigan State, we're going to get run off the court this, with this many turnovers. It was like, what, the Champions Classic two years ago when we played Kansas when they basically gave us the ball 20 times and we were able to beat them in what was still basically a one-possession game. Tark driving in on Goldwire, and he will get fouled. It's another foul on Goldwire, uh, which makes his third. Third foul on Goldwire. Coppin State's going to find themselves at the free throw line. That was a shooting foul. I'll have to update the foul situation. Ah, so, uh, the, so okay, Ryan V, you're saying, J yes, Jalen from Wisconsin. Yes, okay, from Wisconsin. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, we were able to snag him. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, his game has, has been, he's got so much versatility, is really, as Tark makes the two free throws there, so that's 17 points for him in what is now a six-point game. Duke, 60, Coppin State, 54, as Goldwire, a wild pass after he tries to drive baseline and doesn't come up with it, and a block by Jalen Johnson, that's his second of the game. Wendell Moore, wide open, gold wire. No, passes it to Johnson, who can't handle it. Too much heat on the pass, and that pass goes out of bounds. Another turnover by Duke, who squanders a fantastic opportunity because Johnson would have absolutely had two with an easy dunk. A fantastic block by Jalen Johnson. Yo, know, this kid is doing, like, it's just doing it on the defensive end. He's doing it on the offensive end. He's balling. This is crazy. Nine minutes to go here in this game as Duke leads by six. Coppin State now. To the turnaround shot by Tark, who was working on DJ Stewart. No, he was working on Roach. And it's going to be a foul on the floor. Foul on Roach, his second. And Jennifer, the game is playing on our Discord channel, so feel free to jump in there, and you can grab it. The link is in the description of the video. Uh, Kickball on the inbounds pass. Matthew are trying to be sneaky about it. Clayton puts up a three-point shot, no good, and DJ Stewart gets fouled. That is absolutely correct. Foul by Coppin State. Duke not yet in the bonus. Coppin State only with five. That was Coppin State's fifth, so they will just take this one out of bounds. Duke once again opting for the smaller lineup. So haven't seen any Henry Coleman, haven't seen any Mark Williams so far. The game getting a little tight. Here with 8 minutes and 40 seconds to go. Duke still ahead by 6. Needs a bucket. Jeremy Roach dribbling around the outside. And Jalen Johnson gets tripped. Johnson tripped by Nenda Tark. And that's the second foul on number 4. <laughs> the manager has to still sit on the floor even with all the empty chairs. Duke baseline out of bounds here. Ooh, careful. TJ Stewart almost stepped on the end line there. Stewart puts up a tough shot. Jeremy Roach deflects it out. Duke retains possession. Wendell Moore for two. Wendell 
Big shot by Wendell Moore. The floater for two goes, and Duke needed a bucket badly. God, I feel like it's been forever since we last scored. Duke by eight. Not only do we need a bucket, we need a defensive stop. And then another one. Before we actually give Coppin State some belief that they can pull up an upset as Jalen Johnson almost blocks that one. And they're going to go to the free throw line. I don't know. I thought that was a pretty... Hmm. I applaud the effort. I don't mind the foul. It's like, what, his first foul? Like, go for it. Go for it, kid. It's a one and one Or no, it's a shooting foul. It just happens that Duke's now in the bonus. So Coppin State will be taking one and one uh, regardless as uh, Coppin State makes the first. 18 points for Anthony Tark, number 13. Uh, no, sorry. This is Clayton. Uh, 16 points for Clayton. Uh, so far on the night. Tark and Clayton have shown up to play for Coppin State as Clayton gets another one. 17 points for him. 34 points between the two of them. He's got over half the team's points. Uh, between those two as Jeremy Rhodes brings this one up the court. Nice and easy for the Blue Devils. And Wendell, is it, Matthew Hurt, just go up with it. Just go up with it. Wow, we got bailed out right there, actually. A foul is going to be called against number four, Coppin State's uh, Tark here. Although that did look like a cl clean strip. Matthew Hurt should have just turned around and gone straight to the rack with that shot. Didn't. and But luckily, as a result, we are going to, I think we will be at the free throw line as State has put us in the bonus. We'll double-check that here in a sec. Assuming that the stats actually update. So, Coppin State has points, personal fouls. Two, one. This can't be right. This has to be like whole game stats. Hmm. Nope, stats feeds borked again. There we go. Yeah, so three fouls on number three. That's the fourth foul on number four. Thomas has two. One. Clayton, one. And Sarvan has one. Right, okay, so that is... Uh, this is the... Yep, all right, so Duke is in the bonus here. So we're going to go to the free throw line regardless. And the personal fouls for Duke, just to get those squared away. Wendell's got three. Jalen Johnson's got two. No problems there. Roach has, DJ Stewart's got one. Roach has a third. Goldwire's got three. Yeah. Hurt's got three. Baker's got two. All right, we're up to date with the stats. Uh, so both teams actually have put the other team in the bonus at the moment. So as Duke still leads by six points here. With 7:42 to go, we are just actually just came out of the uh, of the timeout. The showing the upcoming Duke schedule here. It is Michigan State on Tuesday. We'll have that game for sure. I'll have that game once again here on Tuesday night. That is going to be a big one. Uh, then some of the not as big ones. Uh, Bellarmine on Friday, December 4th, followed by Elon that following Sunday, the 6th. Um, the Bellarmine game doesn't even have a network associated with it. I don't even know how they're going to show that one. That's weird. And then Illinois, the Big Ten ACC Challenge, December 8th. So that would be another big one. Uh, as that ball sails out of bounds. It's a turnover by Coppin State. That would have landed in the... Uh, that would have landed in the, uh, the, the... One of the first five rows there of spectators. And here's this, this, the, the, the stat that nobody wants to see. Duke with 21 turnovers... 21 turnovers. That's a, if assuming we turn turn the ball over at all for the, that's a big shot by Matthew Hurt. Three points for Hurt. 
give him 12 so far on the night. Assuming we didn't turn the ball over at all for the rest of the game. That's still a turnover every two minutes of game time. Yikes. Like, what the... Okay, we gotta clean... That has to be cleaned up for Tuesday. And I think some of it could be... Some of it is probably attributed to... One, it's the first game. Beautiful rebound by Jalen Johnson. Actually just completely manhandling the opponent there. And again, back-to-back -back three pointers. That three pointer goes to Jeremy Roach. Brilliant shot. And the back to back three pointers have Duke blowing this lead into double digits now with 12. Fantastic. Great look for Duke coming out of this under eight timeout. So, probably some of the reasons for the turnovers as Matthew Hurt gets called for a foul. Quick stop and play. That's Matthew Hurt's fourth. He's got one more. Um, a, it's the first game. B, you have six freshmen you got to deal with like granted these guys have had a longer opportunity to play with each other than like than a typical first game because they have had more practice like they haven't been playing games they've been scrimmaging they've been practicing there were three duke blue white scrimmages that's kind of unheard of um usually you just have the one that's associated with countdown so they've had opportunities to play with one another but not at actual games speed like not in a real not in a real game right so um so i think that has something to do with it um but it just it's a stat that sticks out so much because of where we came from last year right as the free throw is good i think it goes one of two at the free throw line for coppin state with trey jones who had one of the most fant who had the best or the second best assist to turnover ratio basically in duke history um and so that caliber of point, like we're coming from that caliber of point guard, right? That is a really high bar for these freshmen. Someone like Jeremy Roach or even Jer uh, Jordan Goldwire, who's a fine, fantastic point, like great point guard in his own right as, wow, okay, Coppin State hits another three. So now it's an eight, we're back to eight. Um, but that's a very high bar to live up to. So like, I feel like our expectations are a little high. I'm oh, sorry, that was uh, Clayton who now has a 20 point game. So we need to be maybe a bit more patient as DJ Stewart gets his own miss, passes that one to Johnson. <laughs> so who has now 19 points? DJ Stewart there uh, with a rebound assist and Johnson with the points. Offensive rebound for Johnson. 70 points now for Duke. 70 to 60 with five minutes and 30 seconds to go. Wendell Moore guarding at the top of the key. Sarvan is going to put up a three, and that shot is long. Weak side rebound goes to Coppin State. Jordan Goldwire got beat, and here's Tark again, straight on three-pointer. Nobody from Coppin State there. Jalen Johnson brings down the rebound again. That's his 15th at this point. Yeah. We have to prepare for MSU and Illinois quickly. Kevin Morris saying in chat, I absolutely agree. Um... And also, Rebecca, we've been we've had the game on our Discord, so feel free to jump in there. And that game is is where and Jalen Johnson with the rebound and the points. Johnson now with 21 and 16 rebounds. A fantastic game for Johnson. So sorry, he's got 18 rebounds as Coppin State gets denied by the rim. Please tell me there's a replay of that. Please tell me there's a replay of that. This is like a Sports Center not top ten. Let's see. Um, no, okay. This that's the Johnson put back. And are they going to show the actual denial by the rim? Uh, no, they're not. That's really unfortunate because that would have been great. Uh, even though it's kind of kind of mean. <laughs> Coppin State at the free throw line shooting two, makes the first, and gets the second. Ten-point margin for Duke, 4.30 to go. Uh, probably okay to play a little bit of K-ball here. I would take the shot clock down to like 10 seconds before I actually start running any offense here, uh, would be my guess. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So right at the 10 second mark, DJ Stewart dives in the assist from Jeremy Roach, the points to Jeremy Stewart, 21 for Stewart, 74 to the Blue Devils. 
That is now two Duke players, two Duke freshmen that have hit the 20 point mark in their first game. Assuming I have the stats right, because it did say Jalen Johnson 19 points, but I think he has 21. Or I'll just give him more points than he actually has, which is fine. And Duke now running on transition to Gold, Gold, Goldwire should take this himself, and he does. Goldwire with the easy land. Those are his first points of the afternoon. As Duke now has the 16-point lead with the under four, Coppin State tries to answer no good, and they do get it on the putback. 20 points for Coppin State's Anthony Tark. And Coppin State will call a timeout, and that will send us to the final timeout here, uh, final media timeout of the game. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out the, this afternoon. I realize it's a little hard to uh, get the game. We do have the Discord up and running. I guess we can use that in the future as well. Thanks for everybody's patience with that. Thank you for all the follows uh, and, the, and the subs. We'll be back on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, Tuesday night, actually. It'll be kind of late afternoon for us on the West Coast. Uh, for the Duke-Michigan State game, it is the early tip-off there. Duke-Michigan State it will be the 730 uh, Eastern time slash 430 Pacific time tip off uh, for Duke, Michigan State. We got to definitely sort, sort some things out as we go against a veteran Michigan State team who, although they will be without Cassius Winston, uh, still always Tom Izzo will have his team ready to roll. Should be great. And then Kansas and Kentucky will follow that game. Um, I know we have Kansas and Kentucky fans part of our community. Uh, so I. So it'd be interesting to see uh, the split there of we'll folks on both sides of that affair in the late, sort of the nightcap of the uh, Champions Classic. That'll be Tuesday. Uh, the following week on the 8th will be the ACC Big Ten Challenge. That's the other sort of big non-conference game for Duke. Uh, Illinois will come to Cameron. I believe that game is in Cameron. Um So, but a decent start here for Duke, a really nice showing for both Jalen Johnson and DJ Stewart uh, today. Johnson, we knew like Johnson was for real coming in here. DJ Stewart also had a bit of a sense this, you know, he's this combo guard, can get the out the three, the outside three point shot. He's been great tonight. And actually, I guess Johnson actually only has 19. So somehow I gypped, I gypped Wendell Moore of his points and gave them to Johnson, which is the... Uh, so those are flipped now. Um, so Wendell Moore with 11. Wendell Moore with 11. Johnson with 19. Matthew Hurt with 12. And DJ Stewart with 21. Uh, as... We have, uh, and thank you for uh, subscribing once again, Sweet Brute. Thank you very much for the sub on the YouTube. And as Eric points out, they will also be without Xavier Tillman. Uh, Eric, Eric who's, uh, has a lot of Michigan State blood in the family, but does bleed Duke blue. So, wait, was Tillman the one that hit the three in the NCAA tournament that like sunk us two years ago? Is that, is that that's the guy, right? That I'm remembering that. Oh, boy. All right, final three minutes. No, that wasn't it. That was someone else. All right, final three minutes, 20 seconds here from Cameron. And, oh, Groins. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was, that was not good. And Coppin State, another turnover. The 22nd turnover for Duke. Oh, boy. Sick Coppin State with 66. Basically, we have kept Coppin State in this thing with our turnovers. The 22nd turnover for the Blue Devils. What are points off turnovers? 26 points off turnovers for Coppin State. Probably could be worse, actually. Well, that's actually a pretty decent average. As Jeremy Roach's three-point from the corner is no good. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a blowout, too. Somebody was going to ask me if Duke was going to cover and ask them what the line was, because I wasn't sure. But my guess is the line wasn't 10. And actually, Coppin State hits another three. Like, this is... Whoops, not 63. Three. This is a... Uh, 
Seven point game. Wait, who else scored? What? Who else has the? Was Tarek's got twenty two? I just. Yeah, easy for Tark. Okay, so he's got twenty two. The line was twenty nine and a half. Okay, uh, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> The score is now by this Duke by seven. So hopefully, um, wow. Yeah. Dewan Clayton with 20. Anthony Tark with 22. I mean, you got to imagine like teams that are playing Duke in Cameron. They're like out for blood. They're like, oh, okay. We're going into Cameron and Duke doesn't have the fans. Like if there's in time to beat Duke at Cameron, it's basically now or never. Um, despite the whole, okay, it was the, the whole SF Austin debacle from like last year. That was a disaster. So like, at least we don't have to like worry about maintaining some like stupid, like, you know, streak from 2001, but like still like yikes. Um, as a Duke fan, I'm a little, I'm a little scared for Michigan for this Michigan state game too. Uh, Carlos, I gotta say, um, cause the turnovers have not been good and saying, DJ Stewart is oh, okay. DJ Stewart. We have a prediction from chat that DJ Stewart is going to start next game as he drills another three point shot. That may be true. I don't think the starting lineup is going to be set like in this year. Let's put it this way. Duke's going to play its December games and we're still going to be trying to figure out who's in the starting lineup and who's like coming off the bench and Wendell Moore. Oh, beautiful. Great patience. Great patience by Wendell to know that if he shot it immediately, he was probably going to get that shot blocked. And all right, I think we can breathe a little easier now as Duke has opened this to a 12-point lead here, though. Tark still backing down Roach, the smaller Roach, and Tark gets the better of him. That was a mismatch down low in the paint. Decent defense by Jeremy, though, to not foul. Cameron Crazy is equals a 20-point bump. Yeah, people are, like, calling the line as if they were, like, uh, as if the crazies were still in the house, and it's just, like, not not the case. It may as well be, like, on a new... This may as well be, like, a neutral court. Like, <laughs> the only... The only advantage is that the Duke... Like, Duke doesn't have to travel. Seven seconds on the shot clock here. Under a minute on the game clock. Are they just going to take the shot clock violation? No. Jeremy... Uh, DJ Stewart's going to try for three. That is going to hit the rim. And Matthew Hurt can't come up with the rebound. So, rebound to Coppin State. 49 seconds, 10-point game. And gives it right back to DJ Stewart. Turnover by Coppin State. And that is going to seal the deal here. The game got a little interesting here in the second half as a result of sloppy Duke play. We basically shot ourselves in the foot several times. Uh, but we will hang on to take the first win of the uh, not, un, like not normal, like rather bizarre 2020-2021 campaign as DJ Stewart's three-point shot is off. And so no shot there. The final shot by Coppin State goes long and the rebound to DJ Stewart. And that will do it. Duke, 1-0 and on the season so far, heading into a matchup with Michigan State on Tuesday night. We will have that game for you here. Yeah, unfortunately, Henry Coleman and Mark Williams, we did not see any of them any of them play in the second half. Coach K opting to go with the much smaller lineup with the guards. So all the guards got the rotation there. A lot of DJ Stewart, a lot of Jeremy Roach in the second half. DJ Stewart put up 24 points here. Um, no tape. We did see Jamin Breakfield for a few minutes as well. Um, yes, fantastic. Great game for so so. A not a fantastic. You know, we this should have been a 20 point blowout. The defense isn't there yet. The defense isn't quite there yet, uh, and that's expected. When you have a team of half of which are freshmen, you know, um, there are going to be some kinks that we have to work out. Interested to see how we go into the game on Tuesday against Michigan State. I want us to play Kentucky. <laughs> I don't really want to play Kentucky right now. Um, I'll take Michigan State. We'll take who we can play at the moment. Um, but we will be back on Tuesday night. Let's do a quick quick stats recap here for on the Blue Devil side. Final score, 81-71. Um, leading scorer for Duke actually turns out to be G.J. Stewart with 24. It was looking to be uh, Jalen Johnson for a while there, uh, who came out of the gates just... I mean, he had a double-double in the first half, uh, basically. He had, what, 11 points, 10 rebounds at halftime. Um 
So lead, but leading scorer ends up being DJ Stewart. Johnson finishes with 19 points and 15 rebounds. Yeah, the 22, uh, the 22 there turnover is not good. Going to have to clean that up. Wendell Moore third there on the scoring chart with 13. Matthew Hurt with 12. Good to see him getting a uh, nice opening game. Uh, six points for Roach, uh, and actually I'll look at these four assists, however, for Roach. Um, and two for Baker, two for Goldwire, two for Williams, and one for uh, Breakfield. So leader in the assist column, actually Jalen Johnson, uh, which not surprising. We do know that he has some fantastic court vision. He can chuck it across, like find open shooters, and uh, that's one of the skills that he brings. So um, overall, not the cleanest game for Duke, but we get the job done. Um, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. It was a quick sort of game, quick game, not too, uh, not too much uh, wait, not, uh, not too many breaks here. Uh, the Michigan State game, Tuesday night, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time. I think that's going to be nationally televised, I hope, so we won't maybe, hopefully don't have any issues with trying to uh, sort of get folks to see it. Um, but in any case, make sure to drop the sub here on YouTube or on the Twitch side of things is that if that's active. Um, but we'll be back on Tuesday night. Uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, go Duke. Cheers. Yeah, it's going to be on ESPN. Thankfully, we don't get pushed off to like the fourth network or whatever. Uh, but have a great rest of your Saturday. Have a great weekend. And hopefully everybody had a th happy Thanksgiving. Uh, see everybody on Tuesday night. Cheers.